All right, today's video, we are doing the brand new Babylon Pure Arrow. If you have the butt cap up, that's what, 2022? Butt cap up, Babylon will be written up in the head. Uh, white stripes will be on the left, yellow stripes will be on the right. As always, we're gonna mount this butt cap up. We are also going to string this one piece. First thing we need to do is we need to measure out our short side. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and about a half. I'm going to put this clamp on to kind of hold it as a marker. I'm going to go up here and pull that string through. Now we're going to go to this side. And we're going to pull this all the way through. tension on this screen first and we're going to pull tension on three mains on this side And this is Lutzalon 4G Rough 125 at 52 pounds. I know there's people that want to know that. Now I'm going to pre-weave the rest of these mains on this side just so I don't have 30 feet of string flopping around as I'm turning the racket. Leave your loop down on that end so you can pull tension. And here we're going to skip the eighth grommet in the head and the throat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Skip that eighth grommet. Now we're gonna go back, start pulling tension on the other side, on the short side. And on the short side, we're going to pull tension on six main strings. will be a long video, it's number six. I'm going to pre-weave number seven. And we're going to finish out the long side. Again, depending on your machine, you may not 
You might. Oop. Wrong one. Oh, I don't want my string to get pulled through the table break because it can get caught up on these machines. So that's why I try to keep the string to the outside as best as possible. Now is a decision time for you guys. on one piece I have a beginner's video out there which is to give you like the basic basics or you can do other stuff so your decision do you want to go to the bottom cross and do it and up or do you want to go to the second cross over and up uh, if you do the bottom cross what you end up with is a knot when you pull your final cross down here you have to tie your knot with a huge run uh, if you go to the second cross and skip this one till last and what you end up with is a long run over here going to that bottom cross but it is not as long of a run as this one is so actually I think it, no, it's not quite as long but that one's got to come to here that one goes there so you get to skip like two gram you get to skip that much so you get to decide what you want to do if you're going to the bottom just do exactly what I did if you're going to the second one I mean do pretty much exactly what I did I for continuity because this is the way I've been stringing this kid's rackets will go to the second one and what I want so remember top cross bottom cross if you have 19 mains or odd number of mains they need to be the same. So if you're doing like mine would always start will be over, so they always be over here. So I need to make sure that this is under that second main string because I want this this bottom the second cross from the bottom to be the opposite of the top cross on the top we'll find out if I come out right here in a minute I don't even know if that made sense okay but we're not gonna pull that yet we're gonna go back up yep talking to you guys and thinking about it make sure you leave a little bit of a gap so you can get this cross in if you're doing this as a one piece and this one this top cross I do want if I can get it over I do want to start under this outside main string for now it will not always be the outside main. Now I'm going to pull tension on this, just regular tension, and I'm going to put a starting clamp. No knot tension yet. Just to hold everything nice and still. So again, you want this to be the same as this. That one is and see this one is or you want it to be opposite I'm sorry you want it to be opposite this one is over this one is under so that's what we're going for if you're doing the bottom cross you want it to be the same so if that was over you'd want that one over and again I hate pulling all these damn strings but you know the way it is Pull tension, that's why we have the clamp here. Well, now, I'm going to do that. Bring this main string up. And I'm going to pull tension here. And we 
drop that. And remember, you skip. Oop! Say I'm thinking about you guys again. Make sure you leave a gap so you get that cross string in. <coughs> Don't know what I was going to tell you. I was going to tell you something. Uh, no, don't forget skip. This one you don't have to worry about. It's got a string in it. But don't forget to skip that eighth grommet. This one will also start under this outside end. And this will be your easy weave going this direction. No, no ditches. Now we're going to pull this all the way across. Now we're going to pre-weave the next cross. This will be your hard weave going this direction. Pull tension on this second cross. We can drop the clamp. And now you just start stringing the racket like normal. Again, starting under, easy weave, finish over. Afraid when I'm pulling, I'm gonna smack my tripod. Again, you're going to start under, and this again is your hard weave, so just do the best you can. Now, we're going to tie our knot. We've got tension on three, tie our knot. Make sure you leave that little gap so you can get your string in there and tie your knot. Yes, that was with knot tension. Now, I've had people ask, and I don't know if I've answered it or not, but I think I have. I've had people ask me why I use 10% additional tension on my knot string. And there's actually a reason. I used to do more. I used to do 15. I've tried 20. I've done 10. I've done a little bit of all of them. I will tell you on one piece is always forget to tilt it up. But the reason I started just sticking with 10% increase on my knot string, because you know, I mean the most practice I do is for the college players. And what I've learned is when they travel, 99% of the time when they have a stringer, they either will do the 10% because that's what they do, or their machine will only do a 10%. So just to be more consistent when they're on the road, because probably the vast majority of the stringers they run into do 10%. So that's why I do Tell you it's easier to weave at the bottom than it is at the top. So for the university. This is the second kid I've ever had ask me if I could do his one piece. It's called, that's what his dad always did for him. That's what he's used to. So I do. Now if he needs a racket in a rush, he gets a two piece. And 
when they're on the road, you know, I label all my rackets for these guys. So when they're on the road, I've even got notes on my little label there to tell the stringer to string it as a one piece. And I'm going to tell you, it is surprising how many places they go that one they run into a stringer that actually doesn't know how to string very well or doesn't know how to do a one piece. Obviously as this gets smaller this gets more difficult to do. But stringing pattern, if you do a two piece, obviously you just do your mains, make sure you skip the eighth grommet, head and throat. You will tie off on one, two, three, four, five, six, the seventh grommet. If you're using a starting knot, you would also tie off on that seventh grommet. I don't think I even mentioned that. If you know how to string the old uh, 2013 uh, Arrow Pro, you know how to string this. I would almost guess that the old grommets would fit in here, or that these would fit into the new, or these would fit into the old Arrow Pro. And I'm gonna tell you, once these reels get short, These racks, this really gets hard because the string stays so kinky and cor curly. The easy weave, soft weave, I don't even know what people call it. I call it the easy weave. Remember, if you stay down low, it goes by, it goes real easy. This will be our last easy weave. Well, this is where we're going to find out if we did our strings correctly, which I know we did. You'll come in here, you will start under. And these should both all be the same all the way across. So this one should be opposite of both of those, which it is. I'm going to go ahead and pull that is kind of a pain pulling the longer part but it sure gets hard pulling that across and 
I'm going to pull that once and I'm going to pull it again. You do not have to do that if you don't want to. That's just what I'm doing. So here's what I'm talking about. You got to run that is that long. Start under. Remember, that's the only open grommet. Start under the second main string. Not tension. So now you can tie off where the cross would typically tie off at, or you can tie off where the main string would go at. Uh, the runs, this one's a little bit shorter on the outside, but you have a tiny little spot for your knot, and it typically runs that main string. I I'm going to tie down here on grommet one, two, three, four, five, six. That's where I'm going to tie. You feel free to tie off up here on the second cross, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, five, that's eight, the tenth grommet. But I'm tying down here. Tail, string, string. This rough string is hard to get like laser beam straight. I like to have to look, look down at. And I don't do this for the crosses. I pick and take them out. Take the racket out, but it's just too hard to do it with the mains. Looks pretty good. Now we do our crosses. I don't even know if y'all can see that. Everything actually looks pretty decent. Yeah, we're going to go with that. There you go, 2022 Pure Arrow, one piece.